Well, hello everyone, and now for something completely different. The ProAdrenaline V2 Plus by ProDad Software. ProAdrenaline has been around for a couple of years, and with version 2 comes significant enhancements. Not only can you correct for vibrations and fisheye distortions, there are now options for color enhancements and expanded video format options. In what seems to be an attempt to be a viable tool for a long time, it even supports up to 8K high definition videos. Sounds pretty impressive on paper, so let's see how well it really works. Installing ProAdrenaline V2 Plus is pretty easy. I simply clicked on the install file and followed the default settings and default save locations and installed the default third party packs. Once all that is selected, simply hit the install button and all the files will be installed in pretty quick fashion. The first time you run the ProAdrenaline software, you will have to input your activation code. After that, it's smooth sailing. So, one of the first things you'll notice when you open ProAdrenaline is we've got a large open area right in the center. And at the top, you have three tabs, which I'll explain later. On the right, you've got some pull-down menus that allow you to change different settings and tweak the video as needed. There's even a little spotlight feature here that literally puts a spotlight on the screen to highlight the subject matter of your choosing. So I'll just leave that right now. And you get something from other tabs that give you information on the video file and such. So the first thing I'll do is I'll click the import button to open up a file. In this case, I'll pick a short video that I actually took with my Panasonic GH3 Micro Four Thirds camera. You see the first clip of the video pops up in the middle of the screen. And so you got some basic controls on the bottom, such as play, pause, sort of fast forward buttons, and uh, a repeat button. So on the bottom bar is a timeline, and it basically shows how long your video is. And you got a little thumbnail on the bottom left, and some file information on the left uh, as well. And at the top, you can see there's a whole bunch of different options for stabilization and camera type and other features that uh, will appear apparent later and uh, even some uh, rotational controls. And now you'll see that the video information is actually populated now and it shows some pretty neat information about your video such as frame rate, size, encoding, all kinds of interesting things. The ProAdrenaline software supports a whole host of video formats and containers including MOV, MPG, MP4s, AVIs, WMVs, VOBs, MKVs, and so forth. So one of the interesting things I note was a little fisheye icon. And also there's a, a pull-down that you can actually select either some generic fisheye corrections or even some specific corrections for a particular camera you're using. So you can see there's stuff for Canon, GoPro, Mobius, and so forth. So now what I'll do is I'll play a short clip that I imported, and you'll see that as the plane passes, this, this screen's a bit jumpy. And I wanted to see if this software can take some of that jumpiness out. So one of the first things I'll do is I'll sort of, I'll manually move the timeline by clicking and hold the left button, and I can slide the slider over to the exact time I want. Then I click in the left trim tab, and then I'll slide along a little more, and then I'll click the right trim icon. And that sort of tightens up the actual part that I actually want to stabilize. Instead of stabilizing the whole video, I'll just stabilize that one small section. So I'll go up to the... You have three options when stabilizations, sort of a light, medium, and heavy stabilization. Since I don't need to correct for any strange wobble for the CMOS imager or anything like that, I selected the first star for the basic stabilization. So with the first star selected, I press the stabilization button and you'll see that it goes through a, a process where it does its magic hullabaloo and after a few moments I should have a stabilized image. And there we go. So what I do now is I'll play it again. You notice the image does seem a bit more stable. 
What you can do is you can select a split screen to compare the unstabilized and stabilized image. You can see it's very apparent on the left is unstabilized and on the right is stabilized. You can see a lot of the jerkiness has been removed. There's also a vertical compare which splits the screen top and bottom to also help you in case the, your image is a little different. And as you can see, there is a noticeable difference. So to save the file, simply click on the export tab where you can select the actual output folder and you can even save not only as a regular stabilized image but as a split screen that I showed earlier. So be careful when you select a split screen, make sure you don't save it that way if you don't want to. And there's even a YouTube tab if you want to direct, save directly to YouTube. So simply click the export button and the file is exported as an mp4 file. You have several options when you're saving a file. Not only do you have MP4, but you have MOV, Apple ProRes, and AVI. I should also note that you also have three different quality settings for your videos, depending on how much hard drive space you want to use, which I presume has different compression algorithms. Once the file is saved, you have the option of opening the file directly using a play button. So out of curiosity, I decided to try all three settings for the stabilization and see what the results would look like. As you can see, the jittery image shows that it applied too much stabilization, so you got to be careful which selection you choose. Next up is a video recording I did on a small RC car. As you can see, this image was really pretty bad. So very bouncy, very bumpy. It just it looks pretty, pretty awful. So in this case, I went directly to all three settings for the shutter compensation and stabilization and gave it a try. And you can see it took a, a significant amount of the bump and jitter out of the image. I was really pretty impressed with this. I had an even worse image when I placed a camera on my niece's skateboard. And you can see the difference is pretty radical. Look at how the truck bounces on the left. That's pretty amazing. So here's an aerial footage taken by a quadcopter by a club member of mine. The image is pretty shaky. So once again, chose all settings, run it through the processor, and the final image looks drastically better. And here's a little split screen again. And you can see on the left, quite a bit of bouncing has been taken out. It looks really good. Now if you notice, the little time stamp on the left uh, bounces around quite a bit and it was a little bit distracting. So if you look on the right, on the layout tab, there's actually a zoom function. So I can actually zoom in and out of the image. So what I did is I just zoomed in just a little bit, 107%. Play it again. Resolution still looks good. And no more annoying bouncing image. Really nice and easy feature. I should note that you have all sorts of rotation and shift options with the sliders. And I encourage you to play around with them and see what kind of weird and neat things they can do. As you can see, I can tilt the image. I can sort of make it a skew. I can even shift it. Just kind of press buttons and see what happens to really get a feel for what you can do. And it's pretty easy to, to go back to where you started with the, since the numbers are indicated on the right, you can just go all the way back to zero. And there's a little weird little mirrored image it kind of does. I thought that was kind of fun. So it looks like you can really do some crazy stuff if you really want to go wild at it. Okay, here's an image taken aboard an aircraft using a Mobius cam. This particular model was actually a bit bumpy. I was surprised how jittery it was. Maybe a props were out of balance, or since it's a full model, I think it just kind of was naturally bouncy. As you can see, there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on here. So we've got some jitter, we've got some warble, we even got some fish eyeing. So in this case, of course, like I before, I went to the full stabilization, but then I also tried it to see if I could use some of the extra features, such as use a camera optics to, to take out the fisheye and I actually went and selected 
the Mobius cam that I use, which in this case is a wide angle B lens. So now with the specific camera selected, I go through the processing. And let's see what it looks like. Depending on the length of the clip and the amount of processing you do, it may take up to a few minutes or more for certain types of processing. So if you're going to do a whole video, prepare to stand by for a little while while it, it chugs away. And so here we go. You can see it, it took out quite a bit of the wobble. Of course, not 100% of it, but it was significantly better. Also note that the fisheye is gone. You can see a nice straight horizon. A little bit of warble on the fringes, but still a lot better than it was before. Here's a split screen. You can see the difference. Man, a fuselage was really bouncing around, wasn't it? Okay, and this last clip is a quadcopter I had with severe fish eyeing. And of course, it was a bit bumpy too, since it doesn't have any type of active stabilization. So let's see how when I use a fish eye, but this time I'll just use a generic fish eye, since this particular camera is not listed in the camera menu. Okay, so right off the bat, you see the fish eye is, is almost completely gone. That's pretty amazing how we can do that. And of course, the image is much more stabilized. Instead of the warble and bouncing around, things look really good. It looks almost like it has an active gimbal, which this quad did not. It was simply just isolation mount. So you can see it trims off a little bit of the top. It's pretty impressive how it was able to both remove the vibration, the warbling, and the fish eyeing. I have to say, I can't quite understand how it does it, but it's pretty impressive, and I think it does a pretty good job of it. So what do I think of this software? In a lot of ways, it's pretty remarkable. I can see myself using it in future videos to smooth things out when needed, especially handheld videos from my Panasonic. The video editing software I use does have vibration smoothing ability, but is nowhere near as good or intuitive as the ProDrenaline. Plus, I really like the fisheye removal tool. Yeah, it's the simple things in life. There are a bunch of other features that I didn't get to in the interest of time, like all the color enhancement features, for example, so I encourage you to watch their how-to videos to get a full picture. Until next time, stay stable, my friends.